In 2014, Network for Languages London, based at the University of Westminster, received funding from the Greater London Authority through the London Schools Excellence Fund to help raise the standards of languages teaching in primary and secondary schools across London. The initiative was particularly timely, as in September 2014, languages became a compulsory part of the Key Stage 2 curriculum. We would like, during the course of this morning, to give each borough a chance to tell us a little bit about what you've done so far in the project. It's not long. We know that there are a lot of teachers, particularly in primary schools, teaching languages, who don't feel particularly confident. And sometimes that's because they don't feel very confident about the methodology for teaching languages. Sometimes it's because they feel that their own language skills are not robust enough. Project staff worked with schools to identify the kinds of support that they would find most helpful. So, je means I. Can you do maintenant je parle français for us? Um, now I speak French. Brilliant, good, thank you so much. So, one of the aims was to work with teachers in a way that wasn't prescriptive, but rather going into schools to find out where they felt they were and what the gaps were in their knowledge and their skills. So there were lots of really good things about the lesson and a couple of little points perhaps to work on to make it even Absolutely. better. Absolutely, yeah. So some of the things I, I really liked, I mean, as you said, you were, you're encouraging them to develop their language learning strategies, working out meaning. Mm. So they were using clues from the context, but also from bits of words that they knew already. It hasn't been a top-down approach, it's been a we're working with you and we're working with you to support you approach and I think that has been a reason why the project has been as successful as it has been. The best things about this project have been having my mentor to guide me and to encourage me to try new things and to support me along the way um, in those, in those new adventures. The project offered support specifically tailored to school situations. Each school involved was assigned a mentor whose first job was to work closely with staff to identify their development needs in relation to languages teaching. Each term, teachers and mentors decided on a focus for the term's work and put together an action plan. Teachers found the support from their mentor invaluable. You've chosen things that are directly linked to a Spanish-speaking country. Yeah. So there's meaning in learning about it in Spanish. It's, yeah. It sort of all ties together yeah, with the culture. They have been the teachers' one-to-one -one support and buddies, really. Somebody neutral who the teachers can refer to and run ideas past. For me, the main benefit of doing this project was working with my mentor, Anne. Um, she has been really supportive, um, always on hand to answer my questions, and it's been really good from a CPD perspective and really beneficial for my school. Anne comes to my school and does mentoring sessions for me. She's going to help me with looking at other teachers' practice. Um, come and observe my teaching as well, so I can reflect on that and look at any points for development as well. Quelle heure est-il, s'il vous plaît? Naya. It is half past eight. It is half past eight. Mentors were also instrumental in encouraging teachers to learn collaboratively and from each other. Each term, mentors brought teachers together from schools across the borough to participate in workshops addressing common themes. They also arranged opportunities for teachers to share good practice. If one of the mentors thinks that a teacher in a particular school is doing something really well, then they'll suggest to a teacher somewhere else that they go and watch and then discuss that with the other teacher. When we have the throw and catch, how, how do you say it again? Lanzar. Lanzar, okay. And um, catch? Recibir. Recibir. I've connected with Javier through the network we've been um, a part of, and he supported me. He helped me with pronunciation, he helped me with vocabulary and the phrases because, you know, initially you start with words, but you want the children to learn phrases and sentences, and it's been very helpful. It's so much easier for me. So what do we call a bean bag in Spanish? Saquito. Saquito. Can we all say saquito? Saquito. I didn't hear it. Saquito. A strong message from the project was that teaching improves when teachers reflect on their practice.
Teachers in the project kept reflective logs throughout the project, which they discussed regularly with their mentors. The LSEF project is really about helping the teachers to understand and question their own practices. I think if you could perhaps try to um, increase the amount of French you're using yourself, because I do understand that you've obviously got some good French, mm -hmm. but you're not a specialist French teacher. Nope. Um, <laughs> so I think you're doing really well. So just being aware of... It doesn't matter if they try something and it doesn't quite go according to plan, that's okay. But now we're going to reflect on that and see how we can go forward. have really enjoyed all of the training provided. Um, feel all the courses have been of a really high quality and have given me lots of practical ideas to improving my practice. The majority of teachers supported by the project were from primary schools and covered a spectrum from novices to native speakers and from those new to teaching a foreign language to language coordinators. The aim was to increase teachers' subject knowledge and improve their pedagogical skills. A confident teacher who feels secure in what they're delivering, that is going to have a positive knock-on effect on the pupils learning that subject. Selena. Charlie. Esmas. Pequeño. 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 Pequeña. Sí. Que, que río. Muy bien. The pupils will see the confidence in that teacher, the fact the teacher's enjoying teaching the language and they'll want to learn with that teacher. To enable them to improve particular aspects of their practice, teachers from project schools were given free access to Network for Languages professional development courses at the University of Westminster. The CPD programme is very flexible and tailored to meet the current needs of the teachers. So, for example, with the compulsory introduction of languages at Key Stage 2, we have tailored our courses to really help teachers get to grips with what a good curriculum looks like. We have courses for subject leaders, and also through the project, we've been experiencing a huge interest in integrating languages across the curriculum. For me, the best thing is definitely the networking opportunities that we have. We get to meet other professionals and share ideas and concern um, within the borough and also outside the borough. Over 75 schools were involved in the project from across eight London boroughs. Twice a year, teachers from across the project came together for a summer school held at the University of Westminster to network and to take part in workshops and other project-specific activities. It's good to have other people around you and so generally when I go to these meetings, when people will be talking about what they did in class, it is affirmation, you know, so you don't feel like you're on an island planning, not quite sure what's going on when you see other people doing the same thing and discussing expectations and so on, it just kind of puts your mind at ease. Teachers have found that really valuable to make connections with others from across London, which they wouldn't normally get the opportunity to do. And some good professional relationships have developed because of the project and teachers have connected outside the project as well, meeting up, they're emailing each other, they're sharing. Each year, Network for Languages also hosts two Saturday conferences, open to all but which teachers from project schools were able to attend free of charge. This provided further opportunities to network, to learn from keynote speakers and to participate in workshops. We try to get a balance between some theoretical input and then some very practical workshop sessions and teachers seem to like that mix. The project's really helped me um, develop my teaching in year, years five and in year six. I participated in the Pippa's CLIL course and that gave me some ideas about how I could make Spanish for the older children a bit more exciting and different. Maya. Hay menos personas en Lago Titicaca porque hay Lago Grande y Montaña. Muy bien. 
it's given teachers a real flair and confidence in delivering their subject. I think that's going to have a very positive influence on the teachers for their future careers and I do believe the teachers will continue to meet with each other. That's an important part of the project and we're currently exploring um, ways of enabling that to happen. A dice un numero. We had a really excellent tutor who came to us after school and she came to us every week and gave us a bespoke Spanish lesson starting from where we were and took us forward with that. So, and that really has caught fire. The project included schools teaching French, Spanish, Italian, German and Portuguese and an important aim was to develop teachers' language competence. The University of Westminster has an extensive evening language programme and teachers from project schools had access to classes free of charge. Summer schools also offered language workshop options. At our summer schools, we had days where people could come in and, and do a particular language for a day. And we particularly focused those two types of upskilling to the kind of language that teachers would need in the classroom. So we've got excelente, fantástico, bien hecho, buenas preguntas. Buenas. Buenas. <laughs> I like the uh, summer school days where you get to sit down, you get to work on your Spanish. You know, I may have found some of it quite difficult, you know, because I think, you know, obviously being yay much above beginner level. But it's just good to know that you've got that resource out there. We're going to sing uh, Vamos a Rema, which is a different version of Row Row, okay. Row Your Boat. In some schools, native speakers or teachers very proficient in a particular language worked with their less confident colleagues to help them plan and deliver their languages lessons. I wasn't a Spanish speaker at all. Um, Miss Malik, who is our language coordinator, she supported me with using Spanish in our music lessons. She'll help me translate, check the grammar, and she'll check my pronunciations as well. Okay. Rápido, rápido, rápido. Oh, so in the warm-ups I could do some if they've yeah. got to do. Yeah. Rápido, 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 rápido. Now we use our sound, rápido. Try that. Rápido. Rápido. This project um, really gave me the opportunity to actually really reflect on my practice and to actually really think about in greater depth actually what would be the best teaching methods. As well as supporting those just starting out as languages teachers, the project also aimed to develop the skills of more experienced colleagues and language coordinators. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'eau liquide, l'eau solide et la vapeur d'eau? They're the three states and it's liquid, solid and gas. Fantastic. C'est très bien. Specialist experts can also be forgotten sometimes and the excellent thing about this project is it gives experts a chance to shine and we've discovered some new talent through this project which has been wonderful. At the Languages Conference, such teachers were invited to lead sessions for their colleagues. And we'd just gone over to a, to a creative curriculum where we were starting to do topic work. So I thought, well, it gives me an opportunity where I can to fit my language teaching into the creative curriculum. And this is the first time for many teachers that they've ever presented to other teachers. And I think this has given teachers a lot of confidence in their own abilities, that they can actually run training, not just for their school colleagues, but for other teachers. So I think we're witnessing the trainers of the future coming through. Normally I always pre-teach vocab, but for this activity I didn't pre-teach because they are going to read with their partners and they are going to try to decode the information. I have given a workshop in the University of Westminster and it was a very good experience to tell other teachers about my practice and tell them how to use authentic resources and how to teach clear lessons. And a year ago, I couldn't picture myself giving a workshop in the University of Westminster, so 
it has been it has also given me a lot of confidence for teachers wanting to study languages teaching in more depth the University of Westminster designed a master's level action research module especially for the project Participants were mentored to design a research project focusing on an area of their practice, which they then wrote up for MA level credit. Um, as part of the project, my focus question is about motivating and engaging Year 6 learners and preparing them for transition. And as part of that, I've recently started using CLIL just in Year 6. I am focusing on how in, um, use of the target language can increase engagement with learning. Great, thanks very much for that. A big element of the project um, is that the teachers reflect in depth and regularly on their own practice. So the action research module is an extension of that reflection on their practice, but in a much more academic um, way and in a much more um, thought through way. Okay, so we're going to learn a sentence now. Vamos a aprender un frase. We're going to learn a phrase. I think so. it's really important to encourage people to study languages at university, and this could just be the first step for them. Welcome to Oxford, everybody. Now you've finally arrived. We're going to get off to Pembroke College, and um, there's some lovely drinks waiting for you. So. <laughs> To raise pupils' aspirations, schools from the project were involved in a day trip to Pembroke College, Oxford, where they were shown around and had the opportunity to take part in languages workshops led by undergraduates. These windows are quite famous and people come to see them because they're really fancy. And the ceiling is pretty nifty, I think. We try to bring together people from primary schools, secondary schools with students at university level so we can start to make these younger students aware of what it is that you know, they can do with languages in the future um, if, they, if they stick with it. Anyone know what that might mean? Where does it live? Almost. That lives in. Que vive en. Okay? We had a group of year six children who went to Pembroke College, Oxford, and they had an amazing time. And to go into a, a university like Oxford and spend time with the students is definitely inspired them. They came back and they were buzzing. So, the first body part we're going to learn is your head. And in Hebrew, head is rosh. Everyone say rosh. Rosh. Cool. Good accents. I was really, really impressed by the kids. I was teaching Hebrew, which is a language that I think none of them had come into contact with before. And the way that they took on everything that I said so quickly and so willingly, it was just surprising. And that's why I think it's so important that we start teaching kids languages from a young age because they're so susceptible um, to new things at that point in time. And it's a really, really important skill for people to be able to have, especially in today's international world. Shimon Amal Legatbi Gav. Shimon Amar Legat Be Rosh. Shimon Amar Legat Be La Lot. I thought my day at Oxford was really informative. I, I love learning about the languages and learning a bit more about Spanish. I, I like the Hebrew because it was very interesting. And seeing the students, and I don't know, but probably when they were my age, they wouldn't have known how to speak. Um, fluent Spanish but they were really good. I think it's really important to learn languages from an early age and I'm really looking forward to carrying on um, uh, languages when I go to secondary school. When I learned languages like French in primary school it just like you know that language now and you want to know more languages and you can build it up through the years as you grow up and go through your high school years and college and university. Throughout the project, Network for Languages collected data to inform an evaluation of the impact of the project, which they commissioned from an independent consultant. All round it's been a very positive picture. 
There has been an impact on attainment as far as pupils are concerned, which we were very pleased to be able to demonstrate because this project has had a relatively short life. Quelle est la date aujourd'hui? Melia. Aujourd'hui, c'est le 27. Lovely. There has been the question, oh, well, if they're learning the story in French, will their standard of English suffer? Well, I've seen quite the opposite, really. If anything, there's been accelerated progress in the children's learning of writing um, and of reading, um, and really across all parts of the curriculum. You say Lundy in English like this, Monday. I totally agree with you. I hope the legacy of the project will be that we have more teachers in London who feel confident about teaching languages and feel that they're doing a good job and that they can share what they're doing with colleagues and that it will leave a legacy of more pupils studying languages for longer and then also deciding to study languages at university. I think that would be an excellent legacy. If you learn one language, the first language you had, it will help you with the other language. And then when you have two languages, it's more easy for you to have to have another language. And when you have more languages, when you grow up, you'll be a really good person.